infamous Saint Venant's principle is named after Adhemar Jean Claude Bar de Saint Venant, French elasticity theorist. The principle states that the difference between the effects of two different but statically equivalent loads becomes very small at sufficiently large distances from load. Point loads on a surface soar to a stress concentration close to the point of application. A stress concentration is an increase in stress along the cross section that may be caused either by such a point load or by another discontinuity such as a hole in the material or an abrupt change in the cross sectional shape. Even though the essence of this statement is known among structural and mechanical engineers, more recent mathematical literature has given a pragmatic interpretation in the context of partial differential equations. In St. Venin principal experiment, we fix two strain gauges, one near the central portion of the specimen and one near the grips of the universal testing machines UTM, upper stationary holding chuck. The UTM is then switched on and the specimen is subjected to tensile load. The respective strain values obtained from both the gauges are measured and then plotted with respect to time. Since stress is proportional to strain, as per St. Venin's principle, the stress will be concentrated near the point of application of load. Although the average stress along the uniform cross-section remains constant, at the point of application of load, the stress is distributed as shown in figure 1, with stress being concentrated at the load point. The further the distance from the point of application of load, the more uniform the stress is distributed across the cross-section. Material is mid-steel, specimen test section width is 31.5 mm, specimen thickness is 3.4 mm. It is substantial to note that St. Venin's principle brings out the fact that there is no dichotomy in the stress state at a distance that is, of the order of the linear dimension of the loaded area. The handbook approach contains an implicit assumption that the load is evenly spread as in the first case. So even if the actual load was applied to only a small part of the boundary, the critical distance in that case is related to the size of the whole boundary. When solving the equation using the finite element method FEM, the whole is kept arbitrarily close to the load. What sets the limit is that from the physical point of view, the load distribution is well versed. As soon as we make assumptions about distribution, however, there is an implicit assumption about the load distribution which may contrast from the actual one. It is established that the stresses are the same independent of the load details at a certain suitable distance. Since we're dealing with linear elasticity here, it is always a possibility to superimpose load cases. While experimenting with or implementing proofs of St. Venin's principle, it is simpler to develop a principle along these lines stated by Venant himself. The stresses caused by a load system with no resulting force or moment will be small at a distance that is of the same order of magnitude as the size of the loaded boundary. Thus, the stress is caused by the dichotomy between the two load systems with equal resultants. Almost every modern proof is based on the estimates of the decay of the strain energy density for such a zero resultant system. For thinner structures like shells, beams and trusses, it is well identified that St. Venin's principle cannot be applied the same way as it is applied for objects with more mass and density. In thinner objects, disturbances travel larger distances than what we expect because the load paths in a thin structure are limited. Coming to the conclusion, we can establish that without applying use of St. Venin's principle, many structural analyses are very challenging to perform, simply because the detailed load distribution is not known. That was all for this video. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel Explified. Check out our channel for more interesting content.